your friends and always keep your mouth shut. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hey mom, what do you think? You look like a gangster. I know I By the time I grew up, there was 30 billion a year in cargo moving through Idlewild Airport. And believe me, we tried to steal every bit of it. What do you do? I'm in construction. Ooh, he's not Jewish. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. For most of the guys, killings got to be accepted. Hey, Henry, here's an op. Very funny, guys. Uh, here's a leg. Here's a wing. <laughs> what do you like, the leg or the wing? <laughs> to live any other way was nuts. <laughs> we were treated like movie stars with muscle. We had it all just for the asking. It's gonna be a good summer. <laughs> it was a glorious time. In a world that's powered by violence, on the streets where the violent have power, a new generation carries on an old tradition. So this individual, um, as you, your conclusion you just stated, do you feel that, um, based on what you've seen, <coughs> that um, William Bradley, the gentleman that you... Yeah, late, so many years later, mm -hmm. since, you know, 2010, mm -hmm. Bradley uh, showed up, or uh, people put it out that Bradley had identified Bradley at a Cory Booker rally, I think in 2010 or so. And I got sent the article and with the photo of Bradley by John Judge of the Coalition Against uh, Political Assassinations. And he asked me, is this the, the guy you saw in the police station? I said, I've been in the police station and never forget his face, especially when I had seen the picture in the, in the Harlem police station. And I'd seen him there. And I said, this is the guy. We, we have a few pictures here um, of what we believe you, you're referring to as William Bradley. Do you mind at all the, um, showing the audience um, well, the individual you're referring to? Well, it's not really a good picture. This is a picture of him and his mugshot in East Orange, New Jersey. And this is a picture of him, him now. Def it's a different picture than the picture of him with the Cory Booker campaign. In other words, a, a, a black Democrat that was elected and now is in the Senate. But, uh, right, right. Let me ask you this. Um, let's go back, <clears throat> if you don't mind, to the actual moments before 
the shotgun blast that, that hit Malcolm, the fatal shotgun blast that hit Malcolm in the chest. That exchange between Malcolm and what appears to be William Bradley, um, who the trigger man uh, behind the shotgun, do you think Malcolm, um, you said he dared, he kind of looked like he dared he him to shoot. He was glaring. Mm -hmm. You so think he accepted he didn't, he didn't pause. I mean, he didn't try to duck or run or anything. He just stood up and dared the person to shoot him. Mm -hmm. So any time I, I think of something, I said, well, I had cancer, I had a problem. I just thought, hey, I'm going to do what? Like milk. <laughs> Stand up to it. As long as I represented the black Muslim movement as a... Uh, uh, an example of morality, unity, and militancy. As long as I could do that, I represented it. It was when I realized that it could not be represented as that, that I came in and started working among the non-Muslim uh, Negroes, as I announced in, in uh, January, and I had no intention, or rather at March, and I had no intention of ever even speaking on this. Had they left me alone, you still wouldn't know what really took place. Late Sunday afternoon, Malcolm X was murdered as he was about to address a nationalist meeting at the Audubon Ballroom in Upper Manhattan. Moments later, Malcolm's followers seized one of the gunmen as he tried to escape the scene. Intervening policemen engaged in a brutal tug of war to keep the man from being torn to shreds. The cruel irony is that Malcolm was murdered by members of his own race, the very people he was fighting for with his extraordinary abilities. The telling of this tragedy oft resembles a biblical story or a Shakespearean drama, laden with all the passions that flesh is heir to. Love and hate, loyalty and jealousy, unselfishness and greed, morality and debauchery. May we all profit in the telling of this story resolving never to repeat its grievous mistakes. The shotgun killer, William Bradley, walks the streets with impunity. Recently, on Sunday, February 15, 2015, the New York Daily Newspaper wrote a eye-popping and jaw-dropping eight-page spread on Malcolm X that covered many things about the slain human rights leader. The shocking write-up even covered the life of Malcolm's killer, William Bradley. Heading, grim open secret, questions linger. To many, slaying still a mystery. Some say Trigger Man never caught. By Rich Shapiro, New York Daily News. Life is good for El Mustafa Shabazz. The 76-year-old ex-con lives in a gated two-story home in one of the nicer neighborhoods in Newark. He drives a gold Mercedes-Benz E-Class sedan, and he's married to one of the city's most prominent civic leaders. But Shabazz has an even better reason to be counting his blessings. He allegedly got away with one of the most notorious murders of the 20th century. The burly Muslim with the white beard was the chief assassin in the slaying of Malcolm X, according to the author of a Pulitzer Prize winning biography of the slain civil rights leader. In his book, Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention, Columbia University professor Manning Marable identifies Shabazz as firing the first and fatal shots at the former Nation of Islam leader. Multiple sources have told the Daily News that Shabazz's role in the killing has been an open secret in Newark for years. Quote, here's a man who's walking the streets of Newark with impunity, 
a Teflon Don and nobody's doing anything about it, unquote, says Abdul Rahman Muhammad, a historian and writer who was the first to publicly identify Shabazz as the main trigger man. Quote, it's an affront to justice and an affront to the legacy of Malcolm, unquote. Shabazz reached outside his home last week, initially clammed up, when confronted by a Daily News reporter. I don't have no comment. You can call my lawyer, Shabazz said. Pressed further, Shabazz defended himself. It's an accusation, he said. They never spoke to me. They just accused me of something I didn't do. The mystery surrounding Malcolm's assassination has dogged scholars for decades and inspired endless conspiracy theories. Three Nation of Islam members were arrested and convicted of the shooting at the Autobahn Ballroom on February 21st, 1965. Thomas Hagen, then known as Talmadge X. Hayer, was captured at the scene. He later confessed, but always maintained that the other two, Muhammad Abdul Aziz, then known as Norman 3X Butler, and Khalil Islam, then Thomas 15X Johnson, were not involved. But if not Aziz and Islam, then who else killed Malcolm? Malcolm's relatives, supporters, and several filmmakers wrestled with that question for years. In the late 1970s, Hagen provided some tantalizing clues. In two affidavits filed in 1977 and 1978, he provided partial names of his four accomplices. Hagen identified the shotgun-toting man who was the first to open fire on Malcolm as Willie X. Hagen's lawyer, the famed William Kunstler, determined that Willie X was a man named William Bradley. But the case quickly went cold. More than three decades passed before Bradley was identified as the towering Newark man living under the name El Mustafa Shabazz. In his 2011 book, Marable wrote that he was able to confirm through sources in Essex County's black Muslim community that the man formerly known as William Bradley was hiding in plain sight in Newark. Bradley was 15 feet away from Malcolm when he elevated his sawed-off shotgun from under his coat, took careful aim, and fired, Marable wrote. This was the kill shot, the blow that executed Malcolm X. Shabazz's criminal exploits are the stuff of legend in his hometown of Newark and beyond. A baseball star at Southside High School, Shabazz was one of three masked gunmen who robbed a bank in nearby Livingston in April 1968, court records show. Shabazz and a second man, James Moore, were hit with bank robbery charges the following year. But while Moore was ultimately convicted, the charges against Shabazz were dropped. The special treatment Shabazz received, Marable wrote, raises the question of whether he was an FBI informant, either after the assassination of Malcolm X or very possibly even before. Whatever connections Shabazz may have had, they failed to keep him out of prison. He was jailed from 1977 to 1980 on conspiracy charges, officials said. Shabazz returned to prison in 1984 after being indicted on charges that included threatening to kill a East Orange cop, raping a woman, and dealing drugs. In the court records, the name, quote, William Bradley, unquote, is listed as Shabazz's alias. He emerged from prison in 1998. By then, Shabazz was known in Newark's black Muslim community as an enforcer not to be trifled with. He was like a street legend. If you mentioned his name, it would invoke fear for blocks, said a longtime member who asked to remain anonymous. He was notorious. Shabazz turned his life around through his marriage to Carolyn Kelly, a powerful Newark activist who was instrumental in the fight to overturn the murder conviction of boxer Reuben Hurricane Carter. Shabazz made an appearance in a 2010 campaign video for Newark Mayor Cory Booker. Two years earlier, he delivered what now could be seen as a curious quote to the Newark Star Ledger in a story about the prosecution of then Newark Mayor Sharp James. 
He was too powerful politically for a black man in America, Shabazz said. Every time a black man is in power, they send someone to get him out. Not everybody close to Malcolm's case believed Shabazz was the lead trigger man. Malcolm's nephew, Rodnell Collins, is convinced that his uncle's killer was a mysterious Asian man who fled the country. The person who fired the kill shot has gotten away, Collins said. If he was walking the street, he wouldn't be alive. He would simply disappear. Hagen, who was paroled in 2010 and is now living a quiet life in Brooklyn, declined to comment. Aziz was paroled in 1985 and Islam in 1987. Shabazz's wife said the allegations against her husband are bogus. We know nothing about that, Kelly said. It's a shame, she added, of Malcolm's death. We loved him. We wish he were here. Asked if he felt the same way. Shabazz was less effusive. I already told you how I felt, sir, he said. Some say they've seen Bradley driving up to the scene of the crime several times in his Mercedes Benz, going on joy rides, and that his partner, Talmadge Haya, the only one who's ever been arrested for killing Malcolm, can be seen alongside of him on the passenger side. Some say they've seen Bradley just sitting in his Benz, parked at the curb, staring at the Autobahn ballroom. Others claim they've spotted him on the expressway, speeding in his Mercedes-Benz with the pedal to the metal. In any event, Bradley is a free man.
We must ask you, the audience, about the murder of Malcolm X. What positive thing came out of it? Exactly what was achieved? Are we a better people because of it? Look at the rising crime rate in black communities. When you remove the healers, there's a heavy price to pay. Nobody's expecting Malcolm to come back. Don't have well-meaning people joining up with you that you will eventually have to plot to kill when they find out how corrupt you are. It'll prevent a whole lot of innocent people from being destroyed. They wanted to turn Malcolm into a cartoon. But who's laughing now? It's a city full of fun I say Welcome to New York, brother It's a city full of fun Yeah, 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 yeah They got plenty of rats and roaches Enough welfare for everyone They got a whole lot of police cars with their lights all flashing red. Uh -huh. They got a whole lot of police cars with their lights all flashing red. But just try and find one. When you're getting hit upside your head And 
them rent increases. Woo! Why, it's enough to drive a poor man out of his mind. Running star raving man. So you see, you're welcome to New York, baby. You can have it. It's a city full of fun. The Big Apple. Welcome to New York, baby. Now, it's a city full of fun, if you can find it. They got plenty of rats and roaches. So get in line for welfare. They got enough. 